people, it's me, Anya. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome to a new Lisa Weeds video. The first book on this list is called A Cuban Girl's Guide to Teen Tomorrow, written by Willa Taylor Naomi. This story is YA contemporary and it follows Lila, who's from Miami and finds love unexpectedly and herself in a small English town. I really, really enjoyed this book. It definitely lived up to my expectations of the Library of Lost Things, which I believe is Lola's debut book. But at any rate, The Library of Lost Things is the first book that I've ever read by Lola Ta Taylor and Amy, and I rated that book four stars, so I was not expecting this book to also be four stars, you know what I mean? Because typically, sometimes, when I read an author's second book, it's not as good as the first book, so I was not expecting this book to be just as good as the first book. The romance was so, so fluffy and so, so cute and so, so wonderful. Lola Taylor and Amy's writing is like so good and eloquent it kind of reminds me of jennifer neven's writing from blacklist like this book is so 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 good it's so underrated lila is such a wonderful character the writing like i said was wonderful the romance was wonderful everything about this story was so 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 good this book is such a good like feel good fluffy ya contemporary so with that i highly recommend it the next book on this list is called Among the Beasts and Briars, written by Ashley Poston. I don't actually know if it's Poston or Poston, but basically, this story is a YA fantasy and I ended up giving it three and a half stars. And it follows Kalos, who's forced to go on the run when things in the kingdom are going poorly. I enjoy this story. I like the world building. I like the fast-paced, action-packed plot. I like the plot twist because they genuinely took me by surprise. We love to see it. The writing of the story kind of reminded me of Evercoast in the way that it was like more intricate and like straightforward than like other like eloquent fantasy like authors, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does. I think that this story may be Ashley's like fantasy debut. I've read other books by her before, but this is the first fantasy book that I've ever read by her because I believe that the other books that she's written are contemporary or science fiction. You know? So, basically, the writing of this story didn't completely hook me, and honestly, neither did the characters, but I was in it for the world building and the plot. You know? Basically, if this story had sequels, which I don't think it does, I wouldn't be continuing this series. And honestly, I don't know if I would ever read anything more by this author if she continued to write more fantasy. You know what I mean? So basically, I gave this book three and a half stars. The next book on this list is called Soul Swift, written by Megan Bannon. This story is YA fantasy and follows a girl who must reevaluate everything that she knows after she is hunted and betrayed by the religion who raised her. I really, really enjoy this book. I had previously read The Bold and the Blade by Megan Bannon, and that book was so, so, so good. So I had high expectations for Soul Swift. And this book definitely lived up to those high expectations because it was also so, so good. I ended up giving this book four stars because I really enjoyed the action-packed, fast-paced plot. I enjoyed the character development. I enjoyed the romance. I enjoyed the world building. It was so, so, so good. Honestly, the plot reminded me a little bit of Sorcery of Thorns, which is also a solid fantasy standalone. This book is so, so, so good. If I ever made a part four to my favorite fantasy standalones, this book will definitely be in that list because it's literally so, so good. I would say that honestly, The Bold and the Blade is superior since I rated The Bold and the Blade five stars and I rated this book four stars, but they're both so, so good. And I will gladly be supporting Megan Bannon and whatever she decides to write next because she is such an underrated author. This book, like I said, is so, so, so good. And with that, I highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Storm the Old. This story is so, so, so good. It's YA fantasy and it's the sequel to Shadow the Sky, which I read earlier this year in June. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, Storm the Old is so, so, so good. This author definitely stepped up her game for this one. I really enjoyed the action-packed, fast-paced plot. I enjoyed the world building. I really enjoyed Malin's character arc. This story is so, so good. And this duology is so underrated. And for what? Like it has so many great elements that I feel like 
fantasy needles would really really enjoy like i said before it in it has a good action packed fast paced plot great character development the main character is sapphic there are dragons in this story like what more do you want this duology is so 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 underrated and i'm definitely adding it to my part to my favorite underrated duologies list which i don't know when i'm going to be filming that video because honestly i don't even know what this month's videos are going to look like honestly but anyway basically this book is so 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 good and it's superior to the prequel so anyway with that i would highly recommend it and i gave it four stars so the last book on this list is called these violent delights if you didn't know this book is a ya historical fantasy and it is a romeo and juliet retelling set in shanghai in the 1920s so i enjoy this book i gave it three stars I really had such high expectations for this book, and this story just didn't live up to those expectations. Unfortunately, and honestly, I don't even recommend this book. I enjoyed, though, the action-packed, fast-paced plot and the world-building. Those two elements kept me from DNFing this story, but I was not emotionally connected with the characters at all, or the romance at all. Like, through this book, I've discovered that second-chance romance may be one of my least favorite tropes, because it means that all of the chemistry and the development of the romantic relationship had already been kind of established prior to the story's beginning. So I didn't really get to see it actually develop because it was all like already told to me through flashbacks. You know what I mean? So I, ba I feel like you know what second chance romance is. But anyway, with that, I didn't ship the characters and I wasn't emotionally connected to them anyway. So, like, even if it hadn't been Second Chance Romance, I don't think I would have shipped them anyway, but them being Second Chance Romance just made it, like, worse, if you know what I mean. Basically, I didn't love this book as much as everybody else. I will not be continuing the series. I will not be reading the sequel. So, yeah, there's that. I don't recommend this book. So, so in conclusion, I would highly recommend the three four-star books in this list, which are A Cuban Girl's Guide to Teen Tomorrow, Soul Swift, and Storm the Old, and I would not recommend the other two books on this list, which are Among the Beasts and Briars and These Violent Delights. So, basically, if you enjoy this video, please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below why you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!